Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders. But as always, everyone is welcome to learn with us. I am in my pajamas again because we are having a pajama poetry party, a poetry pajama party, however you wanna say it, this week. It has been so fun. Look at all the things we've done already this week. We have learned and reviewed about couplet and stanza. We have written free verse. We have written haiku. We have written sinquain. And today we are going to learn about two more types of poems that are super quick and finish up with a really fun book. Okay, so our goal is I will be able to analyze and write different types of poetry. And remember, a couplet, because a couplet is gonna come up a lot today, a couplet are two lines that rhyme and they have the same beat or pattern, like double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Like I kept the same pace and rhyme, rhythm in that Thing. And then a stanza, it's lines that relate to similar thought or topic. It's like basically paragraphs for poetry and they're usually arranged by their rhyming patterns and their beat, okay? Okay, so let's go ahead and do some stretching. Oh man, still have that little sore spot. Um, I'm super excited for today. I'm really nervous. Excuse me. Every time I stretch, I'm really nervous to write these two types of poems um, in the, like live today, but it's okay. I know that I can do it. I made it through the haiku in the Sin Queen live, um, but I'm a little more used to those. These I'm just like a little bit nervous about. So it's gonna be fine though, We're, it's it'll be really good. And the point of me writing through them live is so that you can kind of see um, my thinking process and that you can kind of do it on your own because it's very easy to tell someone, okay, like go write a poem. But if you don't model like what that thinking process um, looks like, it can be hard to do that on your own, okay? so. Um, let's do our deep breaths and then let's go ahead and get started. I wanted Molly to hopefully come down, but I've been yelling her name and she hasn't come. So maybe I should try one more time. Should I? Okay, here I go. Hold on. Molly, come here. She's probably outside playing. You want to say hello? Come here. No, come here. Say hi to the kids. Oh, yes. You're such a good girl. Say hi. Look on the screen. Why are you being so shy? Hmm? Why are you being shy? You are a good puppy. Say hello. Molly, look at them. Oh, yes. There we go. Oh, sweet Molly. Maybe I could write a poem about you. Should I? Should I write a silly poem about you? Dogs. Dogs are big. Molly's like a teddy bear. I don't think that that's a good poem, but that's okay. You want to stay? Oh, thank you. You're sweet. Okay, we gotta teach the kiddos some poems. You wanna help? An epigram and a limerick, Malls. Okay, bye, have fun. Epigram and a limerick, kiddos, here we go. Epigram is a short poem and it's written in one or two rhyming couplets. Now remember, a couplet is two lines that have the same pattern and the same beat. This is why I'm kind of nervous to do that, but it's okay. Epigram 
and there's a funny or surprising twist in it. We'll see how that goes. And then a limerick is a five line poem. It's supposed to be funny. And the first, second, and fifth lines, there's three beats and they all rhyme. The third and fourth lines, they rhyme in a couplet and there's two beats in each line. So, I don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> but I'm gonna try my best. Okay, here we go. Watch the Toes is an epigram. And they, let's read the backstory on this epigram first because otherwise it really doesn't make much sense. So it says, scientists believe that the bird's head seascape near Papua province in Indonesia may be home to more kinds of marine life than anywhere else on our planet. That makes it an area of very high biodiversity. Many new kinds of marine animals have been discovered there, including two species of epaulet shark. Walking on two pairs of muscular fins lets this slender three foot shark wind its way through coral reefs to hunt for crabs, snails, shrimp, and small fish. When we humans swim over delicate corals instead of stepping on them, we are protecting all of the animals and plants that, de that depend on the reef to survive. Okay, so this again is an epigram and it has two rhyming couplets. Okay, so couplets have a beat. Okay, I'm very nervous. I wish someone who was good at music was here. So I'm going to read it to us, okay? Watch the Toes is the name of this. Near Pa... That would help. Pap you. Pap you. Near Pap you. Biodiversity's winning. Sharks stroll the corals and humans are finning. There we go! guys I can do this near Papu Dio the biodiversity's winning sharks stroll the corals and humans are finning ha! I feel amazing right now okay so here's how it meets the criteria it's a short poem it's written in two lines and the, the funny or surprising twist is that this, it says sharks stroll the corals and humans are finning. So like sh the sharks are the ones going in and out of the corals, which would should be what the humans are doing. And the humans have on fins or flippers to get through the corals, which is normally how the sharks do it. <laughs> I feel on top of the world. Let's do it again. Near Papu Dio, near Papu Di Biodiversity's winning. Sharks stroll the corals and humans are finning. Near Papu Di Biodiversity's winning. Sharks stroll the corals and humans are finning. Let's see if there's the same. Near Papu Biodiversity's winning. Sharks stroll the corals and humans are finning. I can totally do this. Okay. <sighs> Molly, what are you doing? I'm going to write a poem about Molly. And it's going to be funny somehow because it's supposed to be a surprising twist. That's funny. And it's supposed to have rhyming couplets, which couplets are the same pattern. Okay, I can do this. Double, double, toil and trouble. That was an example of one. Okay, so we're going to do this. Golden Doodle. That's Molly. Golden Doodle. Okay, those are some things about Molly. Golden Doodle like a poodle. Okay, Golden Doodle like a poodle. Oh my gosh, poodle. But much cuter. Okay, much cuter. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. That's a that has a beat to it. Golden doodle like a poodle. 
golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter than a, what's cuter than, but much cuter, golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter, okay, so that was a good beat, that's, Okay, so now I need golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Now I need a surprising or funny twist. Takes the place. Cuter poodle noodle. Hmm. Cuter. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire and burn and cauldron bubble. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Er, what is rhymes with er? Cuter, computer, snooter, fooder, mooder. Oh, I got, hold on. <laughs> okay. Replace, replace it with. Guys, you're going to love this. <laughs> okay. So this is the first line and this is the second line because it can only be two lines and I had to do some like, you know, scratching out. Okay, has a flow, a rhyme, here we go. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Replaced her with my husband who is a tutor. <laughs> okay, so this didn't have as much beat. I could improve that, but there's rhyming and there's two lines and it's funny. So I hit almost all the parts of the epigram. 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 <laughs> epigram. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Replace her with my husband, who is a tutor. I could say who's a tutor. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Replace her with my husband, who is a tutor. Who's a tutor? Who's? There we go. The beat's coming. Who's a toodle? Replace with my husband. Who's a tutor? Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Replace with my husband. Who's a tutor? <laughs> there we go. I did it. I'm so proud of myself. Billy probably won't be happy that I told everyone he's a tutor, but it's okay. He loves me. I'm sorry. We all toot. It's fine, hun. Okay. Golden doodle like a poodle, but much cuter. Replace with my husband, who's a tutor. Hey, I did it. Woohoo! I'm proud of this one. I'm hanging this one up. There we go. Maybe I should hang it on the refrigerator for Mr. Wright when he gets home. I think I will. Okay, last kind of poem we're going to write. Woohoo! Is a limerick. A limerick is a five line poem, okay? It's meant to be funny. The first, second, and fifth lines are three beats and they all rhyme. I guess three beats is like one, two, three, right? One, two, three, that, would, that has to be a beat. Third and fourth are two beats. <coughs> okay, I don't know about this one, guys. I'm way less confident, but I wasn't confident in the one. Okay, so this is a limerick, and the limerick is, let me read it to you. Okay, what do they say about this? Five line poem meant to be funny. First, second, and fifth lines have beats, three beats, and they all rhyme. The third and fourth lines rhyme in a couplet with only two beats in each rhyme. Here's the poem. Dolphin fashion. A bottlenose counseled her daughter, put this sponge on your beak underwater. You can scare out more fish, poke sharp stones as you wish, and your skin will stay smoother like it otter. Okay. <coughs> Here's the background on that. 
some bottlenose dolphins near Australia wear pieces of marine sponge on their beaks. Scientists think one mother dolphin invented this trick to protect her soft beak from sharp rocks and poisonous stonefish spines as she foraged her for food on the seabed. Then she taught her offspring to use the spongy tool too. Dolphin daughters seem to learn the behavior, but not dolphin sons. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to figure this one out. Dolphin fashion. A bottlenose counseled her daughter. A bottlenose counseled her daughter. Okay, I hear the beats. A bottlenose counseled her daughter. Put this sponge on your beak underwater. Put this sponge, put this sponge on your beak underwater. Put this sponge on your beak underwater. How is that three beats? <coughs> How is that three beats, people? Three beats and they all rhyme. A bottlenose counseled her daughter. Put this sponge on your beak underwater. A bottlenose counseled her daughter. Put this sponge on your beak underwater. I guess it does. You can scare out more fish. Poke sharp holes as you wish. You can scare out more fish. That does have three beats. Is that syllable? No. You can scare out more fish, poke sharp stones as you wish. Your skin will stay smooth like an otter. Okay. The third and fourth lines rhyme in a couplet with only two beats in each line. So basically I need to write a couplet and then write the rest. Okay. Here we go. I know what I'm going to write about. I can do this. I'm not nervous at all. It's fine. I can do this. Okay. A couplet. So I need to write the last two lines first, I think. The third and fifth rhymes rhyme with the first line. Okay. So the first line. Nope, that's not. Okay. Limerick. It's supposed to be funny. I got the funny down. Okay. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Third, fourth, fifth. And they all, I wish you could see what I'm doing. They all three beats and they rhyme. The third and the fourth is a couplet with two beats, okay? I can do this, so here's how I organized it, okay? One, two, five, three beats, they all have to rhyme. This is a couplet, which means that that rhymes. Yeah, this these two have to rhyme. Okay, so I'm gonna start with these two. Okay, I'm gonna write a poem about teaching, okay? Beats, 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 beats. I have to focus on beats. Couplet has two, has a beat. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn it, cauldron, bubble. Okay, so that doesn't matter so much. Okay, you can scare out more fish, poke sharp stones as you wish. It's kind of like syllables. Okay, it's a syllable. It's a syllable. Okay, teaching. Uh, this is very difficult. <laughs> very nervous. Okay. I can do this. I'm going to show you perseverance, friends. Wish, 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 wish. Pencil, pencil, Molly. Should I write about Molly again? It's e Molly seems easier to me right now. Molly, come here. Play with toys all day long. Sometimes you... Hi. Run, run. Okay, we got to write a poem about you. Come here. Okay, bye. Okay, guys, I'm struggling. I can do this. I know you're giving me brain power about my dog. Here we go. I'm just very nervous. Couplet. Two beats. Two, li two lines. And it has to have a beat. Hmm. Yeah, two beads in a line. You, 
you can scare out more fish. What? Okay, wish fish. Mm, play, play all day. She can play all day. She can play all day. Even when she should lay. Those have the same beats. She can play all day, even when she should lay. Woo! Rhymes, okay. She can play all day, even when she should lay. Okay, so this is my couplet, I think. Two beats, ish, in rhyming, play day, okay. That's the middle part of my poem. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the beginning. This should have, it's gotta be funny, can't forget that. I like writing free verse better that has no rules. F meant to be funny, Molly Molly, three beads all rhyme. Molly, uh, Molly, Molly the Golden Doodle. Molly the Golden Doodle is, Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Molly the Golden Doodle has character. She can play all day, even when she should lay. Molly the Golden Doodle has character. What rhymes with er? Sh she, Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Keeps you character fur. Keeps you um, fur. Er. We'll end in fur. What can we say about our fur? Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Teddy bear. Teddy bear. That doesn't work. Molly the Golden Jewel has character. Teddy bear, fur character. Teddy bear, fur, tur, mer, er, er, other. Other, okay. Teddy bear, fur, like no other. Teddy bear, fur, yes, like no other. Guys, this is the best. Okay, here we here's what we have so far. Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Teddy bear fur like no other. Man, the rhyme, the beat. Molly, Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Teddy bear fur like no other. Teddy character other. Teddy bear fur like no other. How can we make that beat better? Teddy bear fur, Molly the golden doodle has character. Teddy bear fur like no other. She can play all day even when she should lay. This part has to be funny. And it has to rhyme with er. No one, oh. Okay, I got it. Thanks. Okay. I don't know, guys. Let's see. I really tried my best on this. I think it could use some improving, but I think pretty much I did a great job of almost exactly following the rules. Okay. Here we go. This is my limerick. Five lines. Molly the Golden Doodle has character. Teddy bear fur like no other. She can play all day even when she should lay. Thinks she is a human. Don't tell her. <laughs> okay. Her fur character. They all rhyme. Day lay. That rhymes. The beats are there. This is two beats. 
These are three beads. It's a little iffy, maybe a lot iffy, but I think I did it. I'm really proud of myself and yeah. Okay, let's end by reading Rapunzel by Belvin Wolfen. Here we go. Rapunzel lived all alone in a dark, tall tower. She was trapped there by a witch who visited her every day. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let your hair down, the witch would call. And then up Rapunzel's hair she climbed because that was the only way into the tower. Every day the witch brushed Rapunzel's hair. Swish, swish. Then snip, snip, she stole some golden locks to sell for riches. As she left her treasure, the witch always cackled, you can never escape, Rapunzel. Leave the tower and I will put a terrible curse on you. But was Rapunzel frightened? Oh no, not she. If the witch could use her hair to get in, Rapunzel could use it to get out. So one day she did. After climbing down from the tower, Rapunzel pulled her hair free and looked around. Then she started to explore. The idea of returning to the tower made her sad. It's a shame about that witch, she thought. So Rapunzel made a plan. She worked on it secretly every day. And with the help of a new friend from the forest, she was always safely back in the tower before the witch came. The witch never suspected a thing. Until one day, she saw the leaf in Rapunzel's hair. Rapunzel! But was Rapunzel frightened? Oh no, not she. The wind must have blown that in through the window, she said. Well, remember, snarled the witch, if I ever catch you leaving the tower, I will put a terrible curse on you. And with that, she took hold of the end of Rapunzel's hair and climbed out of the window. But the witch didn't get far. Snip, snip! Rapunzel climbed out of the tower for the last time, and she never worried about the witch's curse again. But were the witches frightened? Oh yes, indeed. Bye guys, see you next week. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.